What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons in Focus podcast. I'm Scott Baer. That's Tori McElhaney, the man of the hour. Brand new Atlanta Falcon coming in trade from the New England Patriots, Johnu Smith. Yes, we are so pumped to have you in this brand spanking new studio. He's got the brand spanking new threads on. Right. He's looking good. He's part of this car wash. We've been talking about football. We've been doing hype shoots. We've been doing all kinds of stuff. Hype shoot right. looked really cool, man. It did. Right. Oh, I yeah. liked it. This podcast has nothing to do with that. Easy money. <laughs> this, we're going to start off the fun way. I don't know if you know about what Arthur Smith has been doing here in Atlanta beyond trying to build a consistent winner. He loves importing tight, tight ends from Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony Ferkser has stopped by. Michael Pruitt, Pruitt, uh, Pruitt, Pruitt has been here. Stick to what you know. John U. Smith has know, been there. Man. So in this hard-hitting journalistic Capital J Journalist podcast, my first question to you is, what was Arthur Smith like before he was head coach, before he was offensive coordinator, back when he was tight ends coach Arthur Smith? Give, Art, us, give us some details Art, from Art, way back Art, then. Art was the big bro. And he still is, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that ain't never gonna change, man. Like that's just who he is, you know what I mean? Just one of the most genuine people you'll ever meet. You know what I mean? He kept it real with me from day one. And you know, the, the, the stuff that that man has done for me since I'm talking about before I was even in the league officially, you know what I mean? Like I just I just recognize like, you know, the, 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 the passion that he had for me to succeed, you know what I mean? And you know, you, you don't take people like that for granted, man. So. I got a great love and respect for Art, man. That's my guy. That's he also has guy. a really dry sense of yeah. humor, right? <laughs> where he's messing with you and you're like, does he mess with me? There are yeah. so yeah. many times serious. where I, he's talking and I'm like, he could be joking or he could be dead serious. Yeah. And I don't know which one is which. You got to figure Art out. You got <laughs> to figure him out. It takes some time to figure him out. And he'd be staring at you and he'll say some off the wall stuff. And you'll be like, is he serious or are you playing? <laughs> But that's just art, you know. And I, I, you know, I, I've got them figured out at this point. Yeah, you know? y'all, y'all been together long enough now. Yeah. Do you have a like quintessential like Arthur Smith story from the time that y'all were in Tennessee together? <sighs> where you like think back and you're like, that's who that guy it is. It may not be podcast appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I like to hear. Podcast appropriate. I'm gonna keep that between me and art. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, but uh, you know, I will say, man, it was just uh, you know, not to get into it you know, too much, but, you know, Art, man, was just, you know, he was kind of giving me the answers before the test, you mm -hmm. know what I mean, um, and just made my process a lot easier, you know what I mean, I ain't gonna get into all of the details, man, but Art has just kind of been that guy who, uh, you know, he's just kind of been guiding me, you know what I mean, you know, through, through, through this journey, you know, especially in Tennessee, and, um, you know, it, it's also a, a honor for me to see him grow and mm -hmm. to see where he started. True. I seen him start as yeah. a tight end coach. Before that, he was, you know, quality control on defense. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Yeah. This guy – and this guy just, you know, his, his his growing rate is like a baby's. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, you look up and you're like, oh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so, man, this guy's on is on an awesome path. I'm thankful to be a part of the journey. And uh, I know I know we me and him and, and, and this entire Falcons organization will continue to do great things together. So when you get the call from your agent or whoever you got the call from, yeah. and and somebody says the Falcons want you to come to it, it like to come to Atlanta, yeah. chance to reunite with Arthur. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your reaction to I'm that? Like, man, let's make this happen right now. <laughs> let's go. Let's, let's make this happen right now. Like you know, um, you know the. The one thing about this league is you, you get into these organizations, you get into this league, and it's a bunch of great coaches. I'm not taking that away from anybody. Um, but to have a relationship that I have with Art, that's rare. Yeah. That's rare, man. And and, and I, I've been I've been uh, under the greatest head coach of all time, arguably Bill Belichick. Um, you know, was under Mike Vrabel, uh, you know, Mike Malarkey. Great, great coaches, great people, great men. Um, you know, but I, I didn't have that personal connection and chemistry with them like I had with Art. You know what I mean? So to have that in the head coach, you know, I'm like, let, let's make this thing happen. You know what I mean? I had a great time in New England. I had a great time in Tennessee. Um, you know, but this feeling, man, is, is different. You know, like just from walking in. I hadn't even seen Art yet. I didn't see him yet. And when I walked through those doors, I was like, I'm home. Yeah. I was like, I'm home. Like, I'm Ooh, home. You know I what I mean? I just got chills right there. I was like, I'm home. <laughs> you know? What is it about Arthur that kind of makes you feel like you're kind of coming home in, in that sense? Uh, like, like just to to go back to that to that relationship, like Art just he's just a genuine dude. Like, um, like his background, if you know about who he's from and who his family is, yeah. and 
you know, everybody, I'm sure you guys all know at this point, but I didn't even know until um, I, it was a while after. I, I found out a while after, man. It was it was it was crazy to me, and I didn't know because the way this man came to work every day, every day, and put in the work and um, was selfless. You know what I mean? Cared about the players. Um, wasn't arrogant. Was m the most humble guy you would ever meet. I remember Art took me. I was <laughs> I was in training camp. Uh, my rookie season and Art picked me up in like this old Chevy truck you know what I mean <laughs> and yes. it was like I was like he was like yeah man I I need to get a new car man and I'm like I'm like you know I'm like eh, I guess coach salaries is uh, <laughs> not not like the players you know what I mean I'm like right? it's not like the players but I didn't even know who he was but this is just who this man is man and he he, he was awesome man and just a humble dude and kept that approach um, always you know so hard nosed guy man blue collar guy for sure and, and look, we know what you've done. I think that everybody's excited for what you're going to do with the Falcons. We know what you did in the NFL. We know what you did at FIU. Mm -hmm. What I want to know is what kind of player were you – with the Northwest, the Northwestern Raiders. What you know about that? <laughs> we do the, our research here. We do our, our research here. Focus, I focus. believe that was your first Pop Warner no, team. Northwest Raiders. I'm the a, Northwest I, Raiders. The Northwest Raiders. Listen, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's crazy. I don't even know where you would find that at. Y'all do your homework, yeah. man. Yeah. So that oh, was your man. first Pop Warner team. First, first time Pop that you. Warner team. Where so, did y'all find that, man? That's oh, crazy. I mean, that's we dig, crazy. Y'all dig. dig deep. I like so, it. And this is in Philly, right? This is in yeah. Philly. This, this is in Philly, Philly. Germantown. Wow. Uh, how old wow. are you? I love this reaction. That's wow. Awesome. Yeah, you blowing yes. me away right now. Uh, <laughs> five or six? I would, So that story behind that is my older brother, who's kind of like a father figure to me, man. I'm yeah. the youngest of six. Um, my older brother played. He started He's five years older than me. Um, he started off playing football, and I was, I was probably – I was probably like four or five, and my mom would always tell the story to everybody. Like he hated it so much. She signed him up, but he hated it. She didn't sign me up. I don't think I was old enough. But he hated it so much. As soon as he came home from practice, he took off his pads, his helmet, threw it away. Like I'm done with this, and I would just put it on. Oh wow! And wear, and wear it, That's and just great. wear it. You know what I mean? And I just loved. I don't really remember this, but my mom would tell. I was like four. Mm -hmm. sure. My mom would tell me these stories. Like his Wayne would take it off, and John would just throw it on. <laughs> and wear it, man. And, um, you know, I just – I always – when I the first time I saw the game, like actually remember seeing the game, it was I, it was Madden. It was like probably Madden – probably like probably like the first Madden that ever was created. You know yeah, what I mean? But right. it just fascinated me. You know what I mean? It just fascinated me from the jump. So I fell in love with the game. But back to the, 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 the Northwest Raiders. Um, <laughs> They're going to be so pumped yeah, that my, you're talking my, my, about shout them Shout out right to the now. Northwest Raiders, Holy man. God. Shout out to the Northwest Raiders. Uh, you know, they, they – um, you know, came down to Florida and, and, and played in some championships, Pop Warner championships, and won some, man. So they they on a, a great trajectory. Shout out to them. Um, but, yeah, man, that was the story. My brother played for the Northwest Raiders. I, he would take his pads off, and I, and I would put him on. My mom was like, okay, we got to sign him up, man. So <laughs> from my childhood, uh, yeah, that was the team that, that I was on. Um, what kind of player I was. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, what position did you play as well? So, so I was, I was a little, you know, a bigger. All right. So when you wanted the bigger kids out there, they all might be putting you on a line. Yeah, but every they, time. They, they took my athleticism for granted. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, they took it for granted, man. They so, didn't scout you well right, enough. Right, exactly. Like, so they just threw me on a line. So like my first couple of years, but I love. I just wanted to be out there. I didn't care. Um, so I loved that I was on a line, and then they kind of started getting a whiff of who I was, and I played <laughs> full back, and then they see me break for like forty down the sideline. It was like. Okay, this guy got some talent. Um, and then, yeah, man, so it just – it was – you know, I, I kind of played all over the place, man. It was it was fun uh, playing Pop Warner Ball in Philly. It was it was the love of my life, man, literally at that time. That was like my favorite time of the year. So, as a kid, man, it was – I played everything, basketball, baseball. I won a Golden Glove in basketball. I got trophies yeah. out the wazoo, man. So, maybe Tennessee saw you playing fullback and they thought, we're going to put him back there. We're going to give him the ball and he's going to take off for 76 yeah. yards. Yeah. They did their scouting, apparently. Right. I, I got a picture when I was probably like eight or nine wearing a, a Eddie George jersey. Oh, wow. I was like eight or nine. So, you know, you you know, a lot of, you know, these actions, man, and you whatever you – they got power in. It's power in them, them yeah. actions. You know what I mean? So, I was wearing an Eddie George jersey when I was like uh, eight or nine. You know, I guess they made it so. I, mean, <laughs> I don't know. Now, you're the youngest. You said you're the youngest, I'm the youngest of six. youngest of six, yeah. What was that like kind of growing up with built-in best friends? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> getting bullied. It's so nice. Built-in best bullied, friends. Getting bullied. Getting bullied and getting babied. My mom <laughs> did yeah. not play that. Like, when they bullied me, I'm running mommy. I'm running to mommy. So, and But, no, but like you said, we 
are, you know, I don't know a family that's closer than me and my, my, my five brother, my five sisters and my one brother. We, we like, you know, we stick together like glue, all of us. We uh, we all come in this, from the same household, raised the same um, Christian values. You know, that's 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 who we are first. Um, and, you know, we, we love each other like no other. But growing up, it was rough, man. Oh, yeah. I got bullied. I got caught fat, chubby, <laughs> picked on. You know what I mean? But I, I did. I got my get back. I got my get back. Yeah, I mean, know? older sisters, you think, may do the, the like, motherly thing? No. Sometimes, no, 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 no. No, it was the worst. That it was worse than my way. brother. <laughs> it was worse. But we were all like that to one another. You yeah. know what I mean? But I got it the worst because I was the youngest, and my mom spoiled me. You mm. better not do this to John. No, you better make sure he eat. You, better. you know, my mom uh, had to work two jobs, so at night they had to, mm -hmm. you know, watch over me. You know what I mean? So, um they better have fed me and made <laughs> sure that I was in bed or, or or else mommy was coming. You know what yeah. I mean? So that's just how it was in my household, man. But we got so much love for each other. It's crazy. Speaking of your mom, I was we were doing our research, and there mm. was this one quote that stuck out to I me. I just and love it. It was, love it. It was so good, and it kind of like made me a little bit emotional when I was like reading it for the first time. But you said, my mother was my rock. It was tough. But we always got what we needed, not mm. necessarily what we wanted mm. at the time, mm. but what we needed. Mm. She was so strong all the time. What take us back to to your young younger years and and seeing your mom working two jobs and providing for you guys. I right. mean, what was she for you in that time? So, you guys know about Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um, you hear of it. Um, it is what it is, and it's never, you know, it's called the city city of brotherly love, mm. but. Um, unfortunately, in the areas that I grew up in and some other guys, man, it wasn't a lot of love there. Um, not only, not necessarily talking about the impoverished areas or, you know, the, the low-income housing, but just the the things that surrounded it that came with it, the drugs, the violence, um, you know, just those hardships, man. But my mom was on us, you know, so much the more because of that, you know what I mean, and wanted us to get education. My mom didn't even care about my, my freshman year in high school, that high school didn't have, I didn't play football because my high school didn't have a football yeah, team. no football It didn't have a football team. My mom <laughs> did not care about that. She was like, you're going to get a good education. And um, that, 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 that man, and, and, you know, God always do things according to plan. You know what I mean? And somehow, you know, um, a series of events led me to Florida, the mm -hmm. biggest football state in the world. You know what I mean? So, and some people may argue me. I may be. The people may say it's Georgia. But okay, <laughs> it can be Georgia now. And then I'm a Falcon. Whatever. <laughs> but um, you know, the the biggest football state in the world. You know what I mean. And, and I, I was led there. And you know, I, I kind of you know I blew up. But my mother, man, she she just she she was the strongest woman. Like the things that we went through, and that she endured and never showed any waver on her face or her countenance. You know what I mean. It was just always joy. Laughter in her heart, love in her heart, the most given person you would ever meet. Like, if she got $20 left to her name and you needed it, she's giving it to you. You know what I mean? Like, that's just who my mother is, man. And that's why I love taking care of her today. You know what I mean? And that's why she lives in South Florida. That's why she doesn't work. That's why she will never work. Um, because I, I just, she deserves it. I mean, that's to, to follow <laughs> I think we up with that. Had the same I know, thought. to follow up with that, I mean, you, you talk about like, providing for her right. like she provided for you yeah absolutely you're providing provided for all of us yeah, yeah no all of us, all six, and that was not easy six no. kids on your own no no male around no father around my father passed my father was a hell of a man an ace of a man um loved his family wasn't perfect but loved his family but he, you know unfortunately he passed um when i was er four years old yeah, when you were four. so my mom was left alone to raise you know all six of us and uh she she put that thing on her back and was like let's go you yeah. know what I mean? So that's that's my rock right there, man. For her to, like, show up every single day for, for her kids. I mean, and now, you know, you have the opportunity to, to do some n nice things for mm -hmm. her. What's kind of your favorite thing that you've ever gotten to do for her? Um, Well, she's supposed to be going to Dubai Yo, for, hey. for uh, her 10th year. She, she, she remarried when we left, mm -hmm. so she's supposed to be going to Dubai um, – in June, I believe. So I'm sending her off to Dubai. Um, but up until then, man, it's just been like, you know, just countless things that I've been able to do for her. You just buy her a house, buy her a car. Mom, you don't ever have to work again. Um, you know, just sit here and watch my, my, my crazy babies. You know what I mean? <laughs> She's the greatest grandmother. Um, I, I got two, you know, great, amazing, um, you know, 
Uh, my, my mother-in-law is just, you know, my, my second mother, man. She She's just awesome with our kids. She's just such an amazing person. And, uh, you know, I'm talking about all these women. I better give my wife some love. I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> up next. She watched this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, 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 like, I got to go into that mm-hmm. for a minute. Bala Smith, my, my wife, an amazing woman. Um, my other rock, you know what I mean? My, my support system, my best friend, my lover, my rider, my soldier. Um, Nah, she kill me for that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, no, that's no, nah, nah, her. I got I got some amazing women in my life, man. I, I really do. Yeah, and then to be able to, you know, th- you had that support system, and you've had some difficult times in your life, right? But now you're in a different period. Right. You you have kids, right? right? I Two, got four, four. Come on, man, don't cut me four. short. Four don't cut kids. me short. Don't cut how, me short. Don't cut me boys? short. Come on, no. Yeah, and listen. <laughs> no, I've been busy since the last bio. <laughs> so, so that's that's probably. That's probably it. <laughs> That's probably it. <laughs> I've been busy. I've been busy since the last bio, but um, I got four. I got four beautiful babies, man. Yeah. I got a six-year-old turning seven. My five-year-old just turned six. My one-year-old daughter is about to be two in May, and my eleventh-month old son is about to be one next month. Oh, see, okay, so you, you have, weren't kidding. You have <laughs> four kids. We're gonna cut them short. Now, what was it like becoming a girl dad? For, you know, you have you right. have all these boys, but but what was you it know like my daughter that? is so crazy. I don't even think I'm a girl dad yet. <laughs> <laughs> like she want to play with the boys. She want to. She's the roughest, the meanest. Yeah. The wow, that's my heavy baby. Oh my god, <laughs> you see it? She's so adorable. That's my heavy baby. She just pull on your heartstrings, man. But she's crazy. My daughter's crazy, man. Like I'm not kidding. You know what I mean? So I don't even crazy think I'm a fish. Like I don't gotta really deal with the dolls and the. Uh-huh. Like she's rough. She wanna run around. She wanna pull off your towel when you get dressed. Like she's just crazy, man. Like she she's crazy. So oh, man. I yeah. love it. I, as a certified tomboy myself growing up. I yeah I like yeah that. yeah. She yeah. grew up. Her mom was kind of like that when she was young. Not now, <laughs> but that's where she says she she got. She's probably got it from. Yeah. So you have this. You have this great support system for you Absolutely. now you can be a support system yeah. paying Absolutely, it forward man. right that, it forward. that you've got this opportunity here paying you, you must after everything you've been through what you experience having yeah. that those people uh-huh. helping you yeah it must you must be really excited for this part right I, i'm gonna say this man and i'm like i said earlier i alluded to that i'm a man of faith man and, mm-hmm. and, and god is all for for families and the reason why is because um a good family um, you know that that translates to a good community. A good community translates to a good city. A good city translates to a good state. A good state translates to a good country. A good country translates to a good world. A good world. We ain't got the nonsense that we got going on mm-hmm. now. And I think it starts at home with the families. So for me to be able to be um, the leader of that, um, you know, and I didn't. I wasn't perfect, man. Like. You know, my wife could probably come in and slap me a million times. <laughs> we'll have her on the podcast. Yeah, next, yeah, yeah, yeah. She'll she'll come in next, and you know, I, and I don't have no shame in that mm-hmm. because you know nobody is perfect. You know what yeah. I mean? But man, we, me and her together raising these these children that's that's one of the most powerful accomplishments that we can do. Is not, you know, I love being here, but it's not being with the Atlanta Falcons. Right. Um. You know, that's that's the greatest accomplishment. You know that, that we've we, we've done. So, um, I'm just you know I love her so much, man, and. and that's like I said. That's my best friend, and we're gonna. That's the, you know, the the best thing we've done, man. Man, I that's, love it. That's super. I know. Inspirational, totally. right there. I know, right? Yeah. I feel I feel very empowered that I could run through like a brick wall or something. I mean, <laughs> but I I do want to ask about something because we actually have a connection because you lived in Ocala, Florida. I did. And for uh, dur- during your young adult young years. Adult, young adult boat, yeah. Yeah, because you went to Ocala when you were in high school. High school. High school, yep. yeah. High school. So my family has a teeny tiny little house in Ocala, Florida. No. Yep. My great-grandfather, no. like, built it. And no. it's this small, small little house. It doesn't. It used to not have like air conditioning or anything. <laughs> like it was. They they had orange trees in the back. Yeah. And I tell, no one really knows that much about Ocala, Florida. This is the biggest thing about Ocala, Florida. This yeah. is the most big. John Travolta has a house there. Yeah. Really. That's yeah. like what we stand on. <laughs> like that's like yeah. that's like what we stand on. Like that's wow. firm. Like yeah, John Travolta live here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But. He got like his own landing strip for uh, his airplane, mm-hmm. but like Ocala is not much there. It's horse country, right? You know what it? I mean? It's not much there, man. And coming from Philly to Ocala was a culture shock. That's what. Yeah, we, that's we, what like, I was. Yeah, everybody, you know, everybody be telling me I'm the Fresh Prince of Ocala because I'm from Philly. <laughs> you were not gonna do that. Yeah, you were. <laughs> yeah, you were. But no, 
Uh, everybody always say, you know, give me that analogy, man, because I, you know, I moved from Philly with my aunt and my uncle, right. yeah. not to Beverly, not to uh, Bel Air, yeah. but to <laughs> Ocala, Florida, man. So, and w lived with my cousin. Literally, I got my the cousins that I moved with. It was uh, I moved with my uh, two 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 boy cousins, not like Ashley and uh, uh, what was her name? Oh yeah, Hillary. Hillary, yeah. not yeah. Ashley, yeah. but it was. I had two <laughs> two two of my two of my. They like my brothers, man. Send me and Michael, and then my my little cousin Tamar. But she was like uh, uh, gosh, Lee. Uh, I just said it, Ashley. Ashley. She yeah. was like the Ashley of the house, <laughs> little you know. But uh, yeah, it, it was real similar, man. But Ocala, Florida, yeah. yes. Yeah. It, no. It's interesting that you come because I know. So I'm from Chickamauga, Georgia, which is a really small town okay. in okay. Northwest Georgia. Okay. Yeah. And so when we would go to Ocala, it'd be like I like we're <laughs> we're driving through like the state park and there's yeah, really yeah, nothing yeah. around yeah. and and it's like yeah this tracks but for you right. to go from like inner city Philly, Philly, Philly to Ocala, Florida, where I, for those who don't know Slow. about Ocala, Florida, it is like the smack dab like middle, middle of Florida of, of no and there's not a lot around. And what was you talk about a culture shock? Like, what what do you remember about that time in that transition? So I remember. So mind you, I'm from the city, so yeah. we consider ourselves as like, and I'm from Philly, and Philly, we consider ourselves as like the best dressed people in the world. Like <laughs> everything we put on was like, you know, it was just that. It was it. We never did too much. We wasn't loud about it. Like you know, it was chill. It was polo, some Tims. You know, keep it hardcore, but like that was like that was our swag. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a dicky suit in the hair and then. Mm -hmm. But <laughs> I get the old California. I kid you not. My first day of school, I had on, I had on a, a, a polo Ralph Lauren collar shirt. Uh, I can't remember. I think I had on some seven jeans, and I had on some all white Pumas. Ooh. And that was yeah to me like you know that was basic Philly swag. I'm like okay yeah let me let me see how they coming. I kid you not, and I, this is one of my best friends, good friends still to this day, man. His name Nick Boyton. He had on, he had on like, I don't know if it was like purple and green wristbands. He had on a purple <laughs> like headband. He had on like these purple like the socks to match. He literally looked like a clown, like, 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 <laughs> like a true a clown. Highlighter. Yeah, like, like with some big glit. I'm like, yeah, I'm in the south. I'm like, I'm, a, I'm like, I'm in the south for real, man. But that, that's my guy, man. But like that was like. It was like I'm like I'm like I got all these clothes I ain't even gonna fit in. You know what I'm saying? It's like they'll know I'm not from here. Yeah, my, my 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 boy always laugh. Uh, my my best friend Alfonso, man, he he laugh and be like, yo, when New came here, he gave me like I gave them all of my clothes because I was like, you're like this is. I was like, yeah, I was like y'all not wearing. I was like y'all not wearing it. Like you don't. They like you sure? I'm like man, you can have it. It was I had a bucket of like all of this, all of these clothes, man. I had to like I had to like get corny. <laughs> you had to go get like yeah. a bunch of wristbands. Yeah, I wanted to get the girls. I was like, they ain't gonna appreciate this. You're like steer into the skid, you right. know? Yeah. <laughs> so I had, to, I had to start over, but I'm back. I'm back on it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm back on it now. Oh man, I love that. Yeah. That's important stuff. I just, I don't want to overload you with things that you've already said, but I, Tori found one. I found another one. As we're kind of like building back towards yeah. modern day, this one is just so good. I can't remember where I found it. Maybe ESPN. Um, you said that. I have I'm that. enjoying this podcast, by the You're way. You're kind of learning more stuff. Y'all got to have me back. Yeah, yeah. no, oh. anytime, man. I'm enjoying this. Yeah, you wanna be like I want to do friend. more podcasts. <laughs> no, okay, here's what we want. We want the two Philly guys playing tight yeah. end to yeah. be in the same room. Yeah. We, you we, and we, Kyle. Yeah. yeah. So Why when not, we had yeah. Kyle on the podcast, he did like his whole like own little intro. He was like, what's going on? It's your boy, <laughs> Kyle Pitts. Yeah. Please make fun of him for that. Yeah, we need to. Yes, sir. We'll have y'all both back. Yeah. For sure. Let's basically get us on here, man. I'm too Philly. Philly. I'm gonna get him because he ain't really from Philly. Right. right yeah. Yeah. No, that's we, true. He from the outskirts. That's true. I got love for you, Cal, but you ain't from Philly, bro. <laughs> you ain't from Philly. He's nah, from, that's my guy. He's that's from my Philly guy. adjacent. He's yeah, Philly he's adjacent. Philly adjacent. That's, that's my guy. That's my guy. That's and my guy. That's if you put guy. the entire tight end group in here, like, like we're gonna need some more chairs because right, Arthur yeah. loves those. There's, yeah. there's gonna be about seven yeah, of them. Yeah, there's a lot of guys. But yeah, it's just this really speaks to me because. You can tell how grateful you are when you read kind of things that you talk about. Mm. It says, "I had that survival I had that survival skill, which spoke to me right there. Right. I knew nobody in my neighborhood wanted to be involved in what they were involved in, and they didn't want to be living the lifestyle that that they were living. I had an opportunity, a chance to make it out that a lot of these guys I was hanging out with weren't given. Okay, mm. and then, okay, so you you can get the opportunity." But right. then you make something of it. Make some of it. But then you make something of it. Mm -hmm. And I guess it, if you're catching a common theme of a lot of my questions here is like when you've been through what you 
you must really appreciate this, Absolutely. right? You know, be, mm-hmm. but but like that, like that survival skill is what got you here, Absolutely. right? I Absolutely. mean, like, is that a learned thing? Is that something you've always had? Just the ability to just you know find a way to get recognized in football, find a way to put yourself out there, find a way to take advantage right. of your education, you know, all those types of things. I, I think um, honestly, I think a lot of it was first, you know, just just the home that I came from, yeah, seeing my mom, not really you know, get down about the things that didn't go her way. Um, so naturally, I would say that it kicked in from that and from all of my, my, my sisters and brothers. My brother right now is, you know, going on to, going into his 13th year and in, being incarcerated, and he's one of the happiest people you'll ever meet. Like, wow. you won't even talk to him on the phone, you'd be like, he in jail? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. seriously, you know what I'm saying? And I think we just got that from my mother, and, and that's just, you know, Christ being in her and, and just, you know, working in her and, um, you know, that's shining in us, you know what I mean? So um, growing up in that city, man, the norm, right, which is our, like our norm was not normal. Mm-hmm. And, it's, and, and it was normal to me, you know what I'm saying? It was normal for me to walk past, you know, people that were, you know, drug addicts, you know what I mean? And to really like, you know, kind of just walk past them and, you know, see them, indulging in that you know what I mean it was normal for me to see that and uh <laughs> I've been thinking about what my kids would do in this situation they would probably lose their minds <laughs> little spoiled little brats but uh, <laughs> but uh I was laughing with my mom about that but it's that's that's how it was supposed to be um you know what I mean and um you know our normal you know I didn't realize that my normal wasn't normal until I became like an adult you know what yeah, I mean like we right. get so desensitized am I using the right word yes I hope I am I mean we get so like desensitized to the things that are going around us and so when I like when when life hit me when I was like okay this is the hardest thing I gotta do like let me catch a football you know what I'm saying like (laughs) you want me to you know perform at the combine like man my dog like I I had like you know cops busting my door and pointing guns in my face you know what I'm saying like that wasn't and I was 14 years old you know and that was like normal to me, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, just being transparent, you know what I'm saying? Um, I didn't have the toughest life in Philadelphia by any means, because like I said, my mother, my mother made it happen, you know what I mean? It wasn't easy, but she made it happen. And a lot of kids experienced a lot more worse than me, so just allow that to put, like, just put that into perspective, you know what I mean? But you talk about those survival skills, it had a lot to do with where I was from too, you know what I'm saying? Like, that, that city was rough and rugged, but, Sometimes it's not the worst thing for you when you're going through life, man, to, to see to see you come from those environments mm-hmm. and that those rugged areas, man. So but I am grateful now, man. I'm I'm extremely happy in life. My family's happy. We you know, and we giving back. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like yeah. yeah. We going back to Philly, man. We we helping them kids. We we uh you know, I gotta um uh, I'm going into this would be my second annual camp, my new family foundation. Um having a camp, it'll be in June. Um, and we going back to the area that I grew up in and targeting in the kids that I know and can relate to, you that's know what so I cool. mean? Because I was them and I didn't have that. Nobody really came back and was able to do that, man. So that's what it's about. It ain't just about, you know what I mean? Oh, making it out and getting an opportunity, going mm-hmm. back, grabbing your people, you know what I mean? So that's what we doing. It's like understanding and valuing the opportunity that you have to be able Volume to go it. and yeah. to go Volume. back. Using my platform, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So yeah. And not forgetting where you came and from, Not forgetting right? where I came from. Yeah. Never turn my back on my city. It's a yeah. crazy city, but <laughs> uh, never turn my back yeah. on my city. All right. We have reached – have we reached – are we ready well, for rapid more, fire? Well, well, one more question. Well, no, 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 no. One more question. I, this one's interesting. I don't know. I got all day. Uh, <laughs> were you a competitive weightlifter? Oh, Y'all going in the archives, man. We really even lift, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was I, I lifted weights competitively in high school. It was something that my uh my football coach Ryan Hearn, shout out to him, loving to death, part of this journey as well. He uh he he made all all of us lift weights because he wanted us to get stronger. But I was like, yo, I'm strong. Like I'm I can really compete competitively. So I started competing pet- competitively. I finished second. In the county, I, was, I think I might. Hopefully, I got the picture in my phone. Like I was pissed. I'm holding this big trophy, and yeah. I finished second. 
You know what I mean? And the guy beat me out because I think he had he I think he cleaned and jerked a little bit more than I did. But I was pissed, man. But I got this large trophy. It's probably at my aunt's house in Ocala. Um, <laughs> that is wild. And you're like pissed I mean, about it. You have this huge. Trophy. Also, do you know where that guy is now? I don't know where he at. <laughs> I don't know. His name is Marcus Davis. Yeah, he was a strong dude, man. He went to uh, Vanguard High School. He was a strong dude. You know what I mean? But I feel like we—that's who we need to have on the podcast. Like, <laughs> about here. We might have to, you know. Oh, it might be some tension in here. <laughs> there might be some tension. I was—I was pissed that day, though. Man. I, I, I was holding the picture. I was like, "Bro, you—you—you you, you play second and I'm like, "No, I wanted that first place trophy." <laughs> Got those competitive juices yeah. flowing. Oh, I'm everything. so glad that we didn't. For, I I forgot it. Yeah, no, I. Thank you for saying. Yeah, me no. Today. When you were like, we need to. Rat, I was like, nope. Yeah. I need. Nope. We need to know about this know for about sure. And Ocala too. There's a big football. Yeah. Yeah. Football like. Mm-hmm. Uh, Present. Town, yeah, 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 a lot of guys uh, from Ocala. Uh, PJ Williams, he played for the Saints. Myself, um, Freddie Swain. Um, I can't remember where he was at last, but. Um, it's, a, it's a ton of uh, Dante Culpepper's from Ocala. You know what I mean? It's a lot of a lot, a lot more guys I'm not naming, but shout out to all of them, man. Ocala definitely put out some guys. I grew up in a house. My my two cousins, we all went D1. My uncle had a house, boy. Wow. <laughs> my uncle had a – it was basketball, though. Yeah. It was ah, basketball. Okay. My cousin was like uh, 6'9", and yep. my, my other cousin <laughs> was 6'6". Six, six. They was hoopers, so I got a little of that in my DNA, too. Wow. Yeah, we – You'll have we, to play uh, Drake London and maybe some win yeah. on the soon. There's a, there's oh, a they, pretty he serious basketball he, he went. He went to USC and, and, played, and played ball. Oh, he played, and he played, he played ball? Junior year, yeah. yeah. Oh, he a true hooper. Yeah. But he can't – he probably can't beat me one-on-one, though. <laughs> We gonna see. He can't beat me one on one. I guarantee you. I'm too athletic. I'm too athletic. Even if he probably got the more hooping ability, I'm too athletic. I'm too strong. (laughs) Too. I'm gonna just back him down. I'm gonna be able to hit the mid range. I'm gonna knock down three. (laughs) I like to hoop against him though. Yeah. The first time you ever meet Arnold Ebicady, he will whip out his phone and show you a picture of him doing some windmill dunk during an All Star game. Okay. Okay. Lockdown. For sure. Oh yeah, he like that, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you guys can. Find a basketball hoop out there. I, 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 I would love pay to watch. to watch that. I would love to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> no, this needs to happen. Let's yeah. make it happen, yeah. man. Arthur Smith may not like y'all just Yeah, ball. you know what? We're not hooping. <laughs> yeah, no, we're, we're not, not hooping. We'll do some pig. Yeah. We'll play pig. We'll play pig. pig we'll that's smart. We'll, shoot. we'll play pig. <laughs> and, that, and that's where that mid-range is, is going to come in. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's man. important. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now we d- actually do Now we actually do have to Let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up, Okay. F and F. Part two can come during Later, the spring yeah, yeah. yeah okay at the end of every falcons in focus podcast mm-hmm. we do f and f f and f falcons in focus you should trademark that one you did come that. up with it right F&F. when you sat down <laughs> uh we do like a rapid fire type of thing most of the questions are every player gets the same thing sometimes we've sometimes indiv- we... we've personalized some for you yeah. uh yeah so let's get started with yeah. my question number one, one. Mm-hmm. um what has been your favorite play of your entire career? Uh, uh, ooh. I know. I I guess I, uh, catching Baltimore divisional round. Okay. 2019. Oof, love it. One handed catch. Good one. One cheek, two feet. <laughs> <laughs> that's what counts, right? That's it. Yeah, that's all. Uh, g- is there a movie or a TV that you're currently binging, or one that you just uh, love? Uh, BMF. Oh, me and my wife just finished. Me and my wife just finished Sex Life. Oh, yeah, uh, on Netflix. Yeah. yeah. But B, BMF. 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 Noted. All right. Who is your favorite player growing up? Can be any sport. LeBron James. Yeah. Still That's is. Still is. LeBron. I, I mean, he just got scoring records. Art like, going to kill me for that because we always argue about him and Michael Jordan. Oh, yeah. Well, because. Art is. Because yeah. I'm from Art's generation. Yeah, so and I we get it. You saw it. 90s yeah. basketball. Yeah, is you the saw greatest it. I, I get it. No one knows what a foul is. I'm 27. 27. I'm also 27. Yeah. Okay. So, like, okay. I get the LeBron. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, so yeah. me and Art against you two, 90s basketball versus 2000s basketball. That sounds like a fun. I man. Mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. Uh, we'll win. Okay. <laughs> come on. The, uh, okay, you're going to make fun of me forever when I ask you this. So I'm putting myself out there. Is it water ice or is it water ice? <laughs> or is it neither and I butchered every single one? <laughs> water ice. What did I just say? How I say yeah, it? Yeah, you said water. Exactly. How you said water, it. water ice. Yes. Water. Yeah. Maybe it, maybe sometimes I'm doing like a, a U. I don't, water ice. Water, water ice. <laughs> it's Philly. I don't know. It's a Philly thing. What? I will say Kyle has found, and we we used to have somebody Water from ice. Philly here. Water ice. There is a food truck in Atlanta called Icy. Is is it? Yeah. Is it Water Ice? It is yes. a legit no, Water Ice food truck. No, it's also uh, a guy from Philly, 
got to try it. Big Dave's cheesesteaks out here oh, in Atlanta. Yeah. yeah. You tried it? Yeah, he came on uh, one of our shows. You so got to, we, we got to get him to cater I think he us has. one day. I don't I'm going to make it happen. I'm going to make Beautiful. it happen. Yeah. I'm going to make it happen. I actually I'm think that on he's an advocate for the podcast. I'm at, <laughs> Big Dave's is going He's going to cater for the Falcons one day. I'm pretty one. sure that he's in Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Oh, don't beautiful. quote me on that. I think he is. I think he is. I think he is. Beautiful. I think so. he is, man. Good, good, Bring good the guy. truck and the cheesesteaks. From steaks. Philly. Mm-hmm. Philly-inspired. We got like a Philly day. I love it. Port pretzels, cheese pretzels. Philly cheesesteak. Okay, so this one goes with it. Are you a cheesesteak guy or a roast pork sandwich guy? Cheesesteak. I don't even know what a roast yes. pork sandwich is. Scott was like roast pork, broccoli rob, a little au jus. Come on, no? bro. Oh, I, I wouldn't. Cheese I wouldn't. Steak. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> you wouldn't I dare wouldn't go dare. against it. I wouldn't dare. <laughs> cheesesteak. Oh my gosh, that's all we got. Oh man, is, I had an awesome, awesome time, man. Hey, man. brand new studio, brand new, brand studio. new Falcon. I've been. A, Hey, it's a pleasure, man. That was an elite level podcast, I had so and it's much not time. so much because of us. It was because right. of no. New it guys. was y'all. Y'all made that over happen. here. This is so uh, natural I'll for you, man. Credit. It is. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> we'll <get to> you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Th- thank you so much for joining. Please listen, rate, review, subscribe. It's got to be five stars after this episode yeah. to the Atlanta Falcons Podcast Network. Thank you so much, and we're going to join you again really, really soon. And in not too long, we're going to have Johnny Smith back on. Yes, All right. Sir. Thank you very much. Let's Talk to it. you soon.